In 1 Kings 17, there's a story, and I really suggest you go read it for yourself. I'm not going to take the time to, to read it all, but Elijah was a great prophet, and there was a famine in the land, and he was living by a brook, and God was feeding him supernaturally by having, he got water there from the brook, and then ravens brought him food. And I, I love, the Bible says, and, and the brook dried up. You know, when your brook dries up, God's saying it's time to move. And God spoke to him and said, go to Zarephath, for I have provided a widow there that's going to take care of you. So he went and he found this widow, but the problem was, was she was, <laughs> I say, poor, broke, depressed, and suicidal. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I'm not just making it up. Huh? And that's who God sent him to. I mean, come on, God. I like the bird idea better. <laughs> Why would you send the greatest prophet in the land possibly the greatest prophet ever to somebody in that condition who said to him when he asked her for a morsel of something to eat, she said, we, I've only got one little bit of meal and one little bit of oil. I have just enough to bake one cake, divide it between me and my son, and then we're going to eat it and die. I told you she was suicidal. She had her mind on death, not living. And Elijah said, bake it as you have said, but give me a little of it first. Now, you know how that would go in the media today. <laughs> TV evangelist comes to town and Rob's poor, broke, depressed, suicidal widow. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Well, if God was supernaturally taking care of Elijah, Elijah didn't need the widow. He didn't need her food. She needed a miracle. And in order to get one, she had to sow seed. Are you hearing me? You cannot have a harvest in your life without sowing seed. If you need hope, give some away. If you need a breakthrough, contribute to somebody else's breakthrough. What you make happen for somebody else, God can make happen for you, multiplied many times over. Amen. Amen. Another way that change will not come is feeling guilty and condemned about all the mistakes you've made in the past. Once and for all, will you let it go, get over it, and go on with God? Today. Not another day. Today. Running to people for help instead of running to God. Seven ways change does come. <laughs> the anxious for nothing but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Prayer. With gratitude and thanksgiving for what you already have. If I'm already negative and grouchy about what I've got, why should God give me more to complain about? So we need to have a foundation of gratitude in our life. That goes without saying, thank God in all things, for this is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. Thank God in all things. That's why my devotional for next year is 365 days of gratitude. We need to practice till we get it. Amen? How thankful are you? I would like to become the most thankful person on the planet. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I've got a ways to go. 
The Bible says, be thankful and say so. It's not good enough just to be thankful. We need to say so. We need to show appreciation to people. We need to tell God and other people how grateful we are for what he's done in our lives. Prayer is so powerful. Make this year a year where you pray more than you ever have before. And I'm not talking about having to be on your knees hidden away somewhere. I'm talking about praying your way through the day. I asked God to help me with this many times this morning, but just right before I came out again, Lord, help me. This is you. You got to do it. And I'm planning to thank him when I'm done. And then I'll get on the plane and pray for a good trip home. And then I'll go to the restaurant and pray for a good meal. Amen? Amen. Pray your way through the day. Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. Get your hopes up. Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be opened unto him. I mean, be determined in prayer. I mean, I tell God sometimes, and I'm not being irreverent, but I'm just telling you, this is in your word, and I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> Until I see it happen in my life or for whoever I'm praying for. And that's not being irreverent. The Bible teaches us to be persistent, not, not with a, a you owe me something attitude, but Hold God's word up to him. The Bible says, pray the word and remind him of his promises. God, this is what you've said, and I'm expecting. I'm expecting to see this take place in my life or in the life of the person that I'm praying for. Come on. Get your hopes up. Treat other people good while you're believing for things yourself. Mm. <laughs> Pray and say. Wait expectantly and hopefully for the change you need. Keep a good confession while you wait. Number four, wait with patience and a good attitude. <laughs> Be a blessing to others while you wait. Do your responsibility but cast your care. And number seven, don't let what you see disturb you. Romans 8, 24 and 25. Aren't we just having too much fun today? Amen. This is the happy place. For in this hope we were saved, but hope the object of which is seen is not hope. <laughs> for how can one hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, then we wait for it with patience and composure. Come on, we're going to read that again. Hope is for when you don't see. So you don't get hopeless because you don't see anything happening. That's exactly when you need hope. We have hope until we have the manifestation. For in this hope, we were saved. But hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For how can one hope for what he already sees? <laughs> but if we hope for what is still unseen by us, then we wait for it with patience and Composure. I'm going to be a prisoner of hope. How about you? Amen. And then finally, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is the title deed and the down payment of the good things that are to come. Be a prisoner of hope. 
Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. We started on Thursday night with really uh, a real word from God that he was going to deliver people this weekend from depression and all of its relatives, <laughs> which is basically anything down because Jesus said, look up because your redemption draws nigh. He's our glory and the lifter of our heads. All this down, discouraged, depressed, despondent, despair, all that stuff is from the enemy. And that's not the way that God wants us to live. That's not the destiny that Jesus purchased for us with his blood. Hope deferred. Not having hope is what gets all that started in our lives. It makes the heart sick. The heart becomes sick. So I'm declaring today that if you will be a prisoner of hope, if you will expect something good to happen to you every day, I can't tell you exactly what day it will show up, but I can tell you that you'll be happier every day while you're waiting than you would be if you waited with fear and worry and anxiety and frustration and works of the flesh and all kinds of misery and hating your life. I'm expecting God to do great things. I'm expecting God to do great things. You know, I get tired when I do these conferences. I wake up tired by the time Saturday morning rolls around. And, you know, I always trust God to reward me in some way for my hard work. And so I'm kind of curious to see what God's going to do. I'm expecting God to do something Come on, why don't you just start having fun with God? Why don't you just be his son or his daughter and let him take care of you? Why don't you just get rid of your religious attitude and start saying, God, you're my BFF. You're my best friend forever. Amen? And I believe that something good is going to happen to me and through me today and every day, amen.